Welcome to Mind, Muscle, and Metabolism, the Jade Tita Podcast. Here you get the in-depth science and practical tools needed to change your body, optimize your health, and elevate your mindset. I'm Dr. Jade Tita, and here is what I want you to know. You are different. You are as unique on the inside chemically as you are on the outside physically. And those differences matter. They matter because there is only one rule to achieving optimal health, fitness, and body change. That rule, do what works for you. My goal is to help you understand exactly how. I'm so excited you're here. Your transformation starts right now. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. It's Dr. Jade Tita. Today, we're going to be talking about something different, actually, on the podcast. As you guys know, I do a lot with metabolism, and I like to say when people ask me, hey, what do you do for a living? I typically say, you know, I teach in the realms of mindset, muscle, and metabolism, meaning self-help, self-development, psychology of change, strength and conditioning, and then nutrition and functional medicine. And I guess mind, muscle, metabolism is... The simple way for me to sum all that stuff up, but uh, so far in the podcast, uh, we are, we're going on close to 20 episodes now, and I haven't talked much about the mindset aspect of things, and I want to start doing that because that's a big, huge piece of uh, what I do and what I've been studying since the age of 18 years old, and also, it is something that I don't think a whole lot of people talk about, and it's integral. I mean, I've always had this thing where I've been confused why people want to spend so much time with their health and fitness and, uh, you know, improving in those realms, but not improving in the mental, emotional realm. I've always thought that to be sort of odd. If you want to improve, why wouldn't you want to improve everything? And so I'm very big on self-help, self-development, self-actualization, manifestation, all the things that help us essentially mature, you know, to go from you know, uh, adolescence to, uh, you know, real maturity. And one of my favorite philosophers, Alan de Botton, talks about the idea that most of us are stuck in adolescence. He talks about the idea that um, we are stuck in adolescence because we never get over the idea that the world does not revolve around us. And uh, most of us, uh, you know, sort of don't realize this because we think, oh, adolescence is just something that uh, we sort of have when we're younger and then we come out of it and then we have uh, we're mature and I think we all could probably relate if we're being honest that uh, that is not always the case and some of us may be mature in certain areas and not mature in others and then when you look at the family drama in your life and you know all the stuff that's going on in the world you can see this adolescent mindset and adolescent way of being coming up all the time and two areas where it comes up that I have struggled with uh, mightily in my life and something that I have, uh, most of you who know or many of you know my story, but those of you who don't, I went through a divorce. I went through uh, an affair uh, where I fell in love with another woman while I was with my wife and was kind of found myself in a betrayal sandwich. In other words, I was betraying my wife and I was being betrayed by the person who I was with or, you know, she was being dishonest with me. And this really brought me to... Um, I think a a sort of uh, crisis in that, and it's one of the best things, isn't it funny how sometimes it's the best thing that ever happens to us are the hardest things. And this had me look very closely at myself and essentially go, you know, I really don't like, uh, didn't like who I was. I mean, I was always kind, I was generous, but I was uh, at that time, you know, uh, not fully aware, not clear about who I wanted to be in the world. And what my values were, and how I was going to show up. And so I ended up showing up as a person that I didn't uh, care for so much. And so uh, since then, I have, uh, you know, completely changed. And it's been, there have been wonderful changes. And this is oftentimes the, the case, isn't it, when we go through tough stuff in life. And when I think about it, I'm just kind of like, it's funny, because what I went through was, you know, kind of like a stub toe in the, you know, in the big scheme of emotional wounds. I stubbed my toe, basically, where I got a hangnail. You know, I went through, 
you know, something that is uh, really hard, mostly by my own doing. There's other people in the world who, you know, lose limbs and lose loved ones and go to war and have to see horrific stuff. And so there those people are like, you know, that's like losing an arm or a leg. I just stubbed my toe. But doesn't matter because all of our suffering is useful, right? Suffering is the source. The obstacle is the way. The pain is the path. This is a very stoic philosophy. Uh, and I certainly used my suffering to grow and get better. And part of what I was confronted with, and that's what we're going to talk about today in today's podcast, is the ideas of both lies and gossip. And, uh, you know, I am someone who is a researcher and have been reading psychology for a really long time. But part of my process of figuring out uh, and growing up was really delving into why we lie and why we do the things that we do. And one of the things that you'll, you may be surprised to, un, to know is that lies and gossip are ubiquitous, meaning they are in our lives uh, all over the place, uh, and they have very good reason uh, to be there, actually. So let's talk about lies first, and then we'll get into gossip a little bit as well. But you can kind of think about lies. You know, research has shown pretty clearly that lying is an integral part of our society. In fact, we lie on average between one and five times per day and sometimes more. And these lies sort of uh, have a uh, sort of a bell-shaped curve. What happens is when we're younger, we lie a little bit. And then when we get in our teenage years, we seem to lie the most. And then it sort of starts to trend down again, a little less lying in our 20s, a little less lying in our 30s, a little less lying in our 40s and 50s, and the least amount of lies in our 50s and 60s. Although the research actually is pretty funny on this because it shows that while we lie less overall, our lies in a day uh, get uh, more as we age. In other words, people who tell lies, five or more lies in a day, the percentage of those lies go up slightly as we age, but our total overall lies go down. And I don't know what we can make of that, but I just thought it was an interesting trend. I think most of us can understand teenagers uh, lying a lot. And I think we can also relate to the idea that if we're still stuck in adolescence and you're still dealing with people who are lying to you and not 100% honest uh, about things, uh, or you yourself are this way, we can, that's a good way to gauge about how close we are, how uh, different we are, or how far away we are from this adolescent mindset. Now, here's the interesting thing. Why do we lie? Well, the researchers have, you know, worked this out and studied many, many different cultures and done lots and lots of different research that we won't go into on brain scans and everything else. And essentially, the way you could think about lies is it's kind of like we evolved lies as almost psychological camouflage. So if you think about, you know, a, a lizard or an animal who can camouflage itself, a chameleon is the one I'm thinking about, right, that can camouflage themselves. They can camouflage themselves physically, and it is pr a protective mechanism for them. Well, we humans didn't have the ability to physically camouflage ourselves, so we, but we do have the ability to psychologically camouflage ourselves. And in an uncertain world, and in a world where we could run into another band of humans who could potentially take our things from us or make our world uncertain, we may have had to manipulate and lie and deceive at times. And actually what researchers show is that we are experts at lying. We are so good at lying, actually, we, us humans, that we don't oftentimes even realize that we're telling lies. So we're lying and we don't even realize that we're telling them. Very simple lies to, you know, that go like this. Maybe someone says, oh, how's your day? Good. My day's good. Knowing we're having a terrible day. That's a very simple lie that it's just a cultural small talk lie to lies of like you know where were you when your wife's like where were you and you were off with another lover and we're like oh I was just down the street you know doing whatever so the lies can go these very you know sort of what we would think are you know very insignificant lies that don't have an effect or lies that are very big and very deceiving and uh, even lies that can be dangerous you know lies like you know uh, that could be you know, even seen as protective lies, like someone, you see someone run past you on the street and duck down an alley, and then you see someone else chasing after them with a gun, and the person asks you, where did that person go? You might lie uh, and tell them he went in the other direction uh, to save the person, right? So there's many different reasons we might lie, but 
it probably evolved in us humans as a form of psychological camouflage. We lie because we want to increase our status, um, meaning that we want to appear certain ways. And so we'll use humor and exaggeration and putting on airs and all these things to make ourselves look better in the eyes of other individuals. We will lie to spare feelings, right? Um, a lot of times people call these these white lies, you know, so-called, quote, good lies. We lie uh, you know, for those reasons, someone says, hey, you know, how do I look in this dress? Do I look fat in this dress? And you say no, uh, you know, and maybe they actually do look not good in the dress. That would be an example. Or if someone says, you know, does my breath stink? And you say, no, you're fine. That might be another example of this, trying to spare feelings. And then, of course, we lie to manipulate. We lie to get our way. We lie to have our cake and eat it, too. We lie to control people. We lie for financial gain. Right. We also lie because we are afraid, you know, um, and this is one of the ones that is really tricky. You know, we're afraid that if we tell the truth, we might not be loved. We might not be accepted. We might not be understood. And so many of us have these sort of private lives that we will not tell people uh, and divulge certain things about ourselves for fear of being uh, rejected, for fear of seeming uh, seemingly being outliers. And then, of course, there are pathological liars. There's just crazy, you know, people out there who tell lies and do it pathologically, and this is what they do. You know, it's funny. I had a – me and my brother Keone, when we used to work uh, back in the day in Seattle, we had a guy that worked at one of our gyms that was a chronic pathological liar. Uh, and it was funny. When we first met him, everyone believed him. He was a Navy SEAL, and he also was, you know, a Ph.D. student, double Ph.D. student and all these things. And – Turns out he was actually a drug dealer, a manipulator, didn't even have a background in personal training and got arrested several months after that for stealing drugs from, uh, you know, the hospital that he was an orderly at, not a physician. And so these people just blow your mind because this guy was, uh, for all intents and purposes, incredibly charismatic, uh, seemed super intelligent, very inspiring, very kind. And yet he was living this completely crazy pathological lie that was disrupting his life and we found out later that that's what happened you know he was a pathological liar so there's many different reasons uh, that we lie now here here's the thing the whole point of this is to sort of understand okay so this is a normal thing in life but to what degree is it harming us what degree are our lies keeping people from knowing us and keeping us from knowing ourselves. And I'll be, you know, forthright. Most people who listen to me and read my stuff and are on my email list, they know that I talk very frankly um, about my experiences in my life as a way to teach. But in my particular case, one of the things that I think uh, I had to come to terms with is the idea that I was not a truthful person. And that's funny because in, in many different ways, I think that anyone who would have known me uh, would have said, yeah, Jade's one of the most honest people I know. And I think anybody who would ask, was I loyal, would say, yeah, Jade's one of the most loyal people I know. I would have def defined myself that same way. Um, and that's what's really interesting about this. Yet, at the same time, I was living lies. I was doing things not to hurt other people, but to, you know, control my situation and to sort of uh, be in a situation of have my cake and eat it too. And what this did was it kept me from knowing myself. And it certainly kept the people that I loved the most from knowing me as well. So think about that a little bit. If we have to lie constantly, right, we have to what we're essentially doing is we're not letting other people know our truth. And as a result of that, they don't actually, if they love us and if they know us and if they are friends, they're not actually friends with the real us. They're friends with a plagiarized self. You know, it's one of the funny things. I'm in the Internet business as well. And every time I go out and hang out with other entrepreneurs, it's always really interesting for me. And everyone raises their eyebrows a little bit when people start talking about money because any entrepreneur, entrepreneur knows that most people – who are, you know, making a lot of money or saying they're making a lot of money, like most people who are doing that are typically not making near the amount of money that mo that you think they are. Most people who have good money are not that flashy. It's it's just funny that it seems to, you know, go that way. And 
when you really look under the hood, next thing you know, you find these people going out of business. Why would they be doing that? To increase their status, to make themselves look good. And it's understandable, but it's also highly detrimental. And the whole reason I bring this up is because we humans want a life of meaning. We want to mean something in the world and make a difference in the world and matter to people. And the first thing that we have to understand to grow up is to understand and get past adolescence is to understand that by lying and trying to control the way people perceive us with these lies big and small, what we are essentially doing is we are not actually living fully into our power and into who we are. And the people who like us don't actually know us at all because we are not showing our real selves. And this is where in the research and in discussions and in counseling and in coaching, which I have a background in, a little bit of a background in both. I did couples counseling for a while. I've done coaching since, you know, my mid-20s. Uh, in, in those arenas, what you'll find is that this stuff comes to a head. These lies catch up to people. And we end up in situations where the midlife crisis is a typical example. This stuff does add up. This stuff does create dysfunction in families that last lifetimes and generations. And so making a commitment into honesty and real honesty, you know, like let's go to the extreme, let's call it extreme honesty, where you're no longer going to tell white lies, where if someone asks you, does my breast stink, you might say, yeah, you know, I wouldn't want to be walking around with breath like that, so you might want to get some gum, but to do it in a compassionate way, and I think that's the problem, right? Uh, I've heard a statement, and I love the statement, honesty without compassion is cruelty. Part of the thing that we're afraid of is we're afraid of being cruel to people, but the interesting thing is, is what we do is we sacrifice it for short term to make someone feel good. We sacrifice short term for long term trust. You know, it's funny, um, Kendrick Lamar, who the rapper, has a, a song that was out and the line, I forget the exact song, but the line goes, I keep it 100, I'd rather you trust me than to love me. And I love that line because I think that in the end, we want people we can trust and we can rely on. And so my commitment has been since I went through what I went through is that every single one of my friends will know exactly what's going on in my head at all times. Even the confusion. This is part of the reason why my ex-wife and I are actually best friends. And that's not a cliche. We see each other every single week. I take the dog. We, we just adore each other. We're not together romantically anymore, but we are together all the time as close, close friends. Part of the reason we were able to do that is because neither one of us, uh, both of our lies and both of our sort of ways of being in our marriage uh, ended up, uh, you know, being in a situation where that marriage collapsed, especially my lies, you know, um, caused that. And so what we committed to is to be 100 percent honest with each other. And those were some very difficult, damaging, hurtful, uh, stressful uh, conversations that we had, but we kept showing up and being 100% truthful and honest with each other. And what you emerge out of is you say, wow, we're both just two humans doing the best we can. But once you make a commitment to honesty to somebody and to yourself, mostly, you end up in a position where uh, you can have amazing, amazing relationships and repair even the most damaging of relationships, even the most damaged relationships. My wife and I are a typical example of that. And so think about the people in your life whose lies or who you've been lying to, uh, those relationships are distorted and destructive as a result uh, of those lies. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm not saying that we should all just all of a sudden you know, wake up and go out and start telling all of our people all the things that we've done wrong and all the lies that we've had. My thing is just simply to begin to question the lies in our lives if we want to grow up and move past adolescence. I'm not saying that you got to go and admit to the affair you had, and I'm not saying you have to go and, you know, admit to, you know, that time you stole $100 or anything like that. I'm saying that starting now, you know, if you are wanting to get better, lies become uh, something that can be destructive. It's starting now telling the truth. And this is tough, man, right? Because the truth is, the, the truth is, uh, your truth is not the truth. And this is where we're going to get into gossip in just a minute. But your truth is not the truth. 
and truth is subjective, right? So everybody has different truths, uh, and truth is uh, subjective, and, and truth takes time and perspective to sort of understand. And so oftentimes when you're telling the truth, you're actually only telling your truth, and you're only telling the part of the truth that you currently understand, and that can be very confusing for people. And so that's why we don't want to just go out and volunteer our truth everywhere all over the place. But when the people who we say we love ask, and when we want to have real relationships, learning to communicate in a truthful way and to say, you know, I don't quite have it figured out yet, or I don't know, or my intention is this, or I know that doesn't make you feel happy, um, but I would rather you know the truth of the situation so you can have all the information. One of the things we hate more than anything else as humans is to be kept in the dark. There is nothing more cruel than that than to wake up and think, were we living in an, an reality, an altered reality? Ask anybody who has ever found something out about someone they loved, a, a, a father, a mother who were betraying the family or somebody who I've, I've worked with in the health and fitness realm uh, for a long time. So in the healthcare realm, you'll actually have people keep their illnesses from their family. And uh, that just crushes individuals or people keeping all kinds of things um, from their different family members that actually creates pain and uh, for years and years and years to come. And so when, when I approach this kind of stuff now, what I tend to do is I tend to, uh, with lies, I tend to tell people um, the truth as I know it. And I have several different rules. Some of these you've heard, but hopefully they'll be helpful for you uh, around lying. Essentially, I always ask, is what I'm going to say true to the best of my uh, understanding? Or is it my truth? And whenever it is my truth, and not something factual I'm reporting, I will say, look, this is my opinion. This is my truth. This is the way I see it. The second question I filter it through is, is it required? Is it necessary for me to, to say? Does it add anything? You know, does me saying anything add to things? Does it give information? Does it um, uh, help someone understand? Does it uh, fill in a gap in someone else's uh, reality that needs to be there. Is it necessary to be said? I'm not going to just volunteer my truth. I feel X, Y, Z when it's not necessary to be said. The other thing is, and this one is a tough one. This one's a tough one. Is it kind? And the truth of the matter is um, I, I put these in a hierarchy, right? Because I say, is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Because Sometimes it's necessary, but not necessarily kind. But I, I say, do I, the better way to say it is to say, do I mean this in a kind way? Am I doing this for good? Am I doing, am I telling the truth, and, you know, because I feel like it is the, the right thing to do? Because sometimes you're going to say things to people that are true and are necessary and are going to come across as cruel to them and very painful to them, at least in the short run. But in the long run, it's a truth that they needed to know. And that's why the kind piece is tough, because sometimes you will have to speak cruelties or hurt people's feelings in order to be honest and in order to have the kind of relationships that really matter. That if you want people to trust you again, you first have to learn not you know, to, to, to lie in this way. So to me, those are the things that I ask myself. And a lot of people have heard that. It's, it's not something I came up with, but a lot of people have heard, hey, is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? I do filter things uh, through that. And I don't volunteer things, but if I'm asked, especially if I'm asked, I say, okay, you know, um, here's how I feel about it. And then I deal with the emotions that come from that. Now, I also want to say a little bit about gossip because gossip and lying go hand in hand. Again, lying is psychological camouflage, right? It's a way for us to manipulate people, to get our way, to elevate our status, to spare people's feelings, to manage our fear, actually, right? You know, and, you know, obviously those are the biggest reasons we lie. So in a sense, we could be like, all right, well, we do it for a reason. We get something from lying. And what about gossip? Because gossip is essentially, it's sort of a form of lying, right? It's sort of a form of lying by omission or being underhanded. You're talking about people who aren't there. But isn't that something that we humans uh, are built for? And the truth is, yes, we are. 
Re research shows, psychology researchers tell us that about 80 to 90 percent of the conversations that we have with other people are about people who are not in the room. And again, you might say, why do we do this? Like, why as humans do we tell lies? Well, now we know it was, it was a protective mechanism, a way for us to get our way. It was a survival means to, of survival. Well, why do we gossip? It's the same thing. Uh, it is a built-in evolutionary process to help survival. Actually, it's called the freeloader, freeloader theory of gossip. And Whenever you hear theory in science, it pretty much means it's, we don't use theory the same way that, that, that people use theory out in the regular world. When scientists use theory, theory means it's been studied a lot, and it's pretty well consensus by that time. So just to make that distinction, theory, when a scientist says it, like the theory of gravitivity, is something that's been fairly well studied. Theory, when a layperson says it, is just like, oh, it's just an idea uh, that's just been thrown out there that could, that could be wrong. When we say theory, freeloader theory, it means it's been studied really, really well in psychology research. And essentially, you can imagine, let's say me and you and um, our tribe of 20 people, and one of the people in the group is, is named Bob, and we are hunter-gatherers. And uh, what happens is every time we go out on a, on a uh, hunt, and I'm, I'm, me and uh, my friend Jeff are trying to take down the woolly mammoth, and Bob hides in the background – we might go back and tell our wives and say, you know, Bob just seems like he's not contributing to the hunt. And then what will happen is maybe our wives will notice that uh, he also is taking bigger portions at dinner and is not helping um, with the building. And the last time we got attacked by the tribe next door, he was nowhere to be found. And so what happens is real quick, we are all together sort of vetting each other and essentially reality checking our perceptions. Hey, you know, I'm getting this feeling that Bob is this way. Do you guys see it the same way? And then a consensus emerges. Oh, Bob is a freeloader. And if all works well and Bob has any sort of social sort of um, uh, intelligence at all, he will pick up on the fact that he is now being looked down upon in the tribe and his behavior will be corrected. And if his behavior is not corrected, then of course the tribal leaders have to take steps to fix that. And so this is sort of a freeloader theory of gossip and why we tend to gossip. But it's really interesting because gossip, right, no one likes for other people to be talking about them behind their backs, especially talking shit, right, talking negatively about individuals. And so really when you think about gossip, I like to break it down into venting, gossip, and shit talking. Venting is really just about reality checking your situation. It's kind of just like, hey, look, you know, Mary said X, Y, Z, and I want to run it by you because I took it this way. What do you think? What do you think she meant by that? That's venting, right? I'm not disparaging Mary. I'm just trying to understand and ask you, what do you think about what Mary said? Mary not being there. Gossip is just sort of like, you know, um, Discussing information of the day is kind of like small talk in a sense, right? You know, I heard Mary and her husband aren't doing well. What's going on? Like that kind of stuff. Have you heard anything? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know, but I haven't seen them together. You know, that kind of thing, right? That's sort of – and then there's sort of the shit talk. Oh, my God, I, Mary is such a bitch. I, you know, can't believe this, and I think she's cheating on her husband and this, 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 and this, right? So there's different grades of this. And so where, where does gossip – go long and become destructive to relationships. Just like, uh, you know, we talk about lies, we want to be able to, as we grow up and mature and get better, we want to be able to manage these things. So I have rules around lying, right? Is it true? Uh, and Or is it my truth? If it's factual, I say the facts. If it's my truth, I say it's my opinion. I don't know, but here's the way I feel. Is it necessary to say, I'm not going to just volunteer stuff that is not necessary, doesn't add to the pool of knowledge? And is it kind? And I use that as a hierarchy because sometimes I'm going to be talking about cruel stuff perhaps because truth is more important than making you feel good about yourself. It's the same with gossip. My major rule with gossip is that I have decided I will not say anything about somebody behind their back that I would not comfortably say to their face. I will not say anything behind someone's back that I will not comfortably say to their face. 
That's rule number one that I have with gossip. Rule number two that I have with gossip is that I will not let other people disparage people that I think are friends when they are not there. In other words, if someone is talking shit about a friend that I call a friend, that I know that friend would not like what is being said, I will stick up for them. Regardless of how good that friend is, regardless of the relationships, I will stick up for that person. That's my, my rules. I will not talk about friends behind their back in a way that I would not comfortably say directly to their face. And I will not let other people talk shit about my friends when my friends are not there. My third rule of gossip is I will not engage in gossip, in negative shit talking, period. And I will put a red flag up if I see someone doing it. Someone who is shit talking about someone else is for sure going to be doing that uh, when it comes to me as well. And so I immediately tag them and make a little mental note of them and just like this person is probably not trustworthy, right? Is probably not trustworthy. If they're talking behind people's backs like this, they are not someone I really want to get close to. They're not a next level individual from my perspective. They have not grown up. They're still in adolescence. They're still trying to hang with the popular crowd. They're still trying to raise their status or manipulate um, or they're just too insecure and afraid and, you know, trying to be accepted. It's not, you know, but I will not deal with those things. To me, lies are, you know, uh, destructive to the soul. I really do believe that. And certainly I, ha I can speak now from a place of a personal experience um, with that. And of course, everyone has to, that's my truth, right? So everyone has to decide to what degree they're going to um, let lies sneak into their lives. And gossip to me as well, I think is destructive to relationships, especially the negative uh, gossip. And so there are ways to talk behind people's back in a very supportive way. Like, why can't we just say, you know, Bob, if he was here, I would like to hear what he says about this. But my opinion is that he is not, um, you know, and if he was here, I'd say it to his face. And I have said it to his face that he's not pulling his weight out on the hunt or whatever. Why can't we just have those difficult conversations? Why can't we just pull someone aside and say, after we vented and kind of reality checked our perceptions with someone in a respectful way, why can't we then go to that person and just say, hey, listen, I wanted to just have this conversation with you and let you know how I'm feeling um, because of X, Y, or Z, you know, and, you know, I'm just wondering and want you to know because it's be starting to become an issue for me if someone is a close loved one. Now, obviously, if it's just someone who's an acquaintance, then why would you need to have that conversation? But then again, ask yourself, why would you need to be talking shit about them or gossiping about them if they're just an acquaintance? What do you care and what are you gaining from that, right? So from my perspective, both lies and gossip keep us from knowing ourselves and keep us from knowing others well. And we humans, if we are nothing else, we are social beings. We need connection. And the people who you know, I want to connect with are the people who are trustworthy and honest and loyal and people who I know that what they are saying to my face is what the reality is. I want to be that person. I think that that's what a lot of people would like to be, but we don't take enough time uh, to understand why we are doing these things. And the easiest thing and the easiest way to deal with this is simply to begin to become aware of it. Once you start realizing, hey, I don't want to tell lies anymore, you find yourself saying the, <laughs> the darndest things to people. I mean, I remember when I first began this sort of process where I was just like, I am going to commit to the fact that everybody who I love and who are my closest friends are going to know me and all of me. As embarrassing as it might be, as, you know, as offensive as it might be, uh, you know, to them or me, I'm going to just tell them essentially how I feel if they ask. They deserve that. I don't want to be a plagiarized individual anymore. I want them to know me for me. And what I found is that, wow, I was lying a lot more than I had ever thought. Um, and it started to become uh, something that I was, was like, this is amazing how much we live our lives, you know, um, bullshitting and avoiding and using lies by omission or just lying outright. And so I just stopped doing that. And I say that because to me, avoiding, exaggerating, bullshitting, 
lying. They're all sort of variations on this theme of trying to uh, manipulate uh, ourselves to manipulate others, to sort of, you know, uh, be in a position where we are uh, adjusting our behavior in ways that is manipulative to others. And I think that's the big that's the big piece there. It's about manipulation. I mean, obviously, a skilled, someone with, with good social agility and good social skills certainly is going to be like a psychological chameleon. They're going to be able to connect with people. They're going to be able to pick up on someone's emotions and be responsive to their, their uh, you know, um, things that they're saying and uh, all of those kind of pick up on the social dynamics, pick up on someone who's left been being left out of a conversation and bring them into the conversation. All that stuff is great and is a form of psychological camouflage, but it's also an honest, inclusive form. It's not manipulating people in a way to make your status better or to get something over on them. You know, one of uh, my favorite quotes uh, is a quote by Neil Strauss, and he says that people lie so that they can control others, right? So it's, it's basically a manipulation technique. It's, the quote goes something like this. He essentially says that um, what someone doesn't know can't hurt me. And I love that sort of definition because it really is about I am going to keep reality from you so that I don't get hurt, so to speak. And uh, is that really how we want to be in the world? Don't we want to touch, move, and inspire and grow and have people trust we are who we say we are? Or do we want to live these plagiarized lies where we're lying and talking shit about everybody? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love this stuff, you know, so I know it's not the typical metabolism stuff I normally do. But I think it is such a huge part of, uh, you know, sort of our lives. And I just wanted to give you sort of a beginning introduction into some of the science and sort of philosophy and uh, commentary on lies and gossip. So I'm going to end there, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you at the next podcast. Pop it in real quick just to say thank you so much for your interest and support of the JTTA.com podcast. I am bringing back by popular demand the live Q&A calls I used to do back in the day where you can get on live with me, ask your question directly, and have me answer it in full. Questions about thyroid and adrenal health, autoimmune disease, any health condition, belly fat, muscle building, performance enhancement, you name it, we are going to cover it on the Q&A podcast. If you'd like to be on these live Q&A calls with me and speak to me directly, all you need to do is become a patron of the podcast. You can go to www.patreon.com backslash jtita. That's www.patreon.com slash Jade Tita, become a patron of the podcast. I would greatly appreciate your support and you'll be able to access me live to answer all your questions in depth. Thanks again for your support. See you on the podcast.